The conflicts that have come to define violence in the Middle East are disputes over land, certainly, but also about religion and the people who comprise each faith. But Jews, Christians, and Muslims actually have more in common than people think. The three religions trace their origins back to the same person, the prophet Abraham. Abraham is viewed as the father of the Jewish people and the first to make a covenant with the monotheistic God we think of today in Western religions. According to the covenant, God would offer protection and land to Abraham and his descendants. In Christianity, Abraham is the father of the faith. His intention to obey God by offering to sacrifice his son Isaac is seen as a foreshadowing of God's offering of his son, Jesus of Nazareth. The prophet Abraham, known to Muslims as Ibrahim, has a crucial role in Islamic belief as well. Muslims believe that he is one of the ancestors of the prophet Muhammad and trace their lineage to Abraham's first son, Ishmael. Think about it. Abraham is a point of unity for all three of these religions. Three religions, one region sacred to all of them, including the cities of Jerusalem, Nazareth, and Bethlehem, and one forefather, are instead embroiled in one of the most divisive conflicts of the 21st century. Where did it all go wrong? Tonight, we invited three religious leaders to address this very question. Joining me now are Bishop William Barber, founding director of the Center for Public Theology and Public Policy at Yale Divinity School, Rabbi Sharon Brous, the senior and founding rabbi of the Los Angeles congregation, Ikar, and Imam Imad Enchasi, senior imam of the Islamic Society. Um, I'm sorry, Islamic Society of Greater Oklahoma City and chair of the Islamic Studies Department at the Wimberley School of Religion at Oklahoma City University. Thank you all for being here. I have been excited about and trying to make this conversation happen for quite some time, and so I thank you all. I am going to go ladies first uh, uh, to, to our wonderful Rabbi Sharon Browse. And, and I just want to ask you about this, because you know, I think the thing that is so jarring about what's happening right now in the Middle East is that it, it, it's a conflict almost among cousins. It's almost like a, a war among cousin religions uh, and peoples. How do you view it? And, and how, what is our way out of people thinking of each other as the other when they're all the children in many ways of Abraham? Thank you so much, Joy, for having me here with the Imam and with my good friend, Bishop Barber. Um, I'm so glad you started us with Abraham. Actually, the Torah portion that Jews all around the world are reading on this Shabbat that we'll read tomorrow morning tells the story of the death of Sarah and the death of Abraham. And I just, it, as you were speaking, it, it makes me think of one important note in that story that happens right at the end of this Torah portion, which is that Abraham's two sons, Yitzchak or Isaac and Yishak, Ishmael are estranged from each other. They, throughout the course of their life, um, they spend many, many years apart. But after the trauma that Isaac experiences when his father almost sacrifices him on the top of the hill, the first thing he does when he steps out of that trauma is he finds his way to his estranged brother. And the two of them reconcile with one another and they spend years together and they actually they, they they build a different kind of future together and i find that to be a very heartening message for us in this time in which it seems like we have these irreconcilable differences we are cousins we are family and what it takes is people who are willing to break script enough to find our way not into war but to find our way toward one another with open hearts and with a quest and yearning for peace yeah, and Imam and Kasi, th I think that's beautifully said. Um, and, and I, I want to bring you in on this as well, because, you know, if you think about it, if you do like the sort of 700 years of the Ottoman Empire, all three of these people lived in this region and shared this region together. It is a more recent phenomenon that you've sort of had, you know, the sort of drawing of lines by European nations who decided uh, lines of, of demarcation for nations and sort of inter, you know, war, you know, wars between these groups. But how do you see the future of a, a world in which these regions could return to a state of grace with one another? I'm glad we started with Abraham as well. Um, you know, uh, Muslims are descendant of, of uh, Prophet Ishmael as well. And as the rabbi eloquently said, uh, the two brothers came together towards the end and they actually buried their father together. 
uh, both Ishmael and Isaac came together and buried their father Abraham together. Um, yes, uh, the Ottoman Empire um, and throughout the whole region, Muslim Jews and Christians lived in perfect harmony. As a matter of fact, most of the sciences that we are enjoying nowadays uh, could be traced all the way to Spain, where Muslim Jews and Christians lived together, from algebra to algorithm. Uh, those are sciences uh, that uh, brought um, all the all, all the intellectual people together uh, in order to better humanity. Uh, the way forward is for us, as I always kid around when I always say, I said, Jews, Muslim, and Christians are brothers from different mothers, literally <laughs> brothers from yes. different mothers. I think I think the, uh, the the way going forward is to understand. Uh, before we are brothers from different mothers, we are actually human beings. Um, uh, and we are the sons uh, and the daughters of Abraham. And um, our father right now, looking at all this um, family feud, uh, would be probably weeping. Yeah, family feud and mass death and tragic, needless death. Bishop Barber, um, you and I have had this conversation. Uh, I will uh, disclose to folks that we've talked about this on the phone, so now we're going to sort of bring our conversations uh, to real life. I mean, it, Christians, you know, may not understand that in a future in which there is a Palestine, if they visit Bethlehem, that would be in what would be Palestine. It's in the occupied West Bank or, uh, you know, yeah. Jesus is of Nazareth. Nazareth is a majority Muslim city. Bethlehem is majority Arab Christian city. And so it's like these sacred places, um, Jerusalem and, and, and Bethlehem and all of these, Galilee, they're located all on top of one another in these regions. They're sacred to all. How do we get to a place where people can recognize each other as, as the imam said, brothers from different mothers? Yeah, we get so trapped in language that's, that, that's just political and not just theological and political. And so, yeah, I talk about Jesus being a Palestinian Jew, but I'm a Christian preacher. But in this moment, what I want to emphasize, as you're saying, and that the rabbi and the uh, imam are saying, the, the moral commitments that we share together. And one of those greatest moral traditions is that every person is created in the imago dei, in the image of God. Every person is a reflection of God. That doesn't have anything to do with the lines we've drawn or who we say people are, all of us. And, 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 the, and the Talmud, for instance, and an Islamic teaching both say, that to save one life is to save humanity. And Christian New Testament teaches that out of one blood, God created many people. If that's the starting point, and that's why we're speaking pastorally to the world, if that's the starting point, then we have to say an unequivocal no to indiscriminate violence, especially against women, children, and the elderly and the sick. We have to be able to say with moral consistency that what Hamas did on the 7th is wrong and what Netanyahu and the government, not the people, but the government, is doing to civilian in Gaza is wrong. And, and if you start there with this imahu dehi, the imago dehi, who we are as a people, and so what we have to do, and there'll be a lot of terms thrown around, but what we ultimately mean, whatever term you use, is you must stop it. Stop what? We must mm -hmm. lift a moral plea to stop murder, stop occupation, stop kidnapping and using hush, stop using people as pawns. We have to find a way, and, and it's happening, Jews, Christians, Muslims, to stand together, stop indiscriminate killing, stop it, stop it, stop it. Because if we don't put a restraint on that, we actually end up destroying the very thing that we want to preserve and defend. And that is recognizing the imago dei, the humanity of all people. That has to be a starting point for any kind of real solutions. Uh, amen to that. Um, Rabbi Brous, what would you say to the leaders of this country if you could talk to them uh, about what they could be doing and saying differently about the way they're dealing with what's happening in Gaza and in Israel? Well, it depends if we're talking to the academic leadership, to the political leadership. I mean, I think one of the traps of this time that the bishop is speaking about is there's a kind of false binary that I recognize, Joy, that you're actually trying to break by even bringing the three of us together in this conversation, the four of us together in this conversation. There's this false sense that you're either with the Israelis or you're with the Palestinians. I'm with humanity. My heart breaks for my Jewish family. My heart also breaks for my human family. And so I'm 
I am deeply, deeply worried about uh, my family's safety, about my Jewish family's safety in Israel and here in the United States. And I'm also deeply worried about the Palestinian cancer patients who wonder if they'll even find safe haven, um, you know, in, in the hospitals in Gaza and the parents who are writing their names on the on the legs. I'm worried about the people who are held, the Israeli Jews who are held hostage. I'm worried about the Thai workers who are being held hostage mm. in Gaza right now. So the first thing I think the leadership needs to do is take a breath and speak more responsibly in this moment because there are literally lives on the line and it feels really good to be tribal in moments like this and to fight for our team and to stand up and scream slogans that rhyme with each other. But what we actually have to do is avoid the dehumanizing rhetoric, which we know will lead to acts of dehumanization to more violence. This is a malignancy in our culture. That's it's right. really a sickness. And I'm very worried about the days ahead. I do, to, in terms of the political leadership, I am very grateful that, that the members of the Biden administration have called for a temporary humanitarian pause, which will allow for humanitarian relief to get into Gaza, relief for those families that are really in imminent danger for those children, and called for the immediate release of the hostages, the 240 who've been kidnapped from southern Israel. Among them, members of my family members of my community members, um, including, including yeah. many young children and elders, as we know right now. Yeah, indeed. And Imam, Imam, Imam Nkasi, the same question to you. What would you like to see the leadership in our country do and say differently? Well, the solution for this, for this issue is going to come from courageous leadership. Um, uh, rabbi Verit, who is the rabbi here of Temple Bene Israel, and myself, actually went to uh, the city of Oklahoma City, and we stood and we addressed um, uh, the councilmen and women um, about the rise in Islamophobia and anti-Semitism. Um, often I would talk to Rabbi Vered right here in Oklahoma City and say, if it's up to the uh, people of faith, uh, the religious leaders, we could get this one solved. Uh, mm. Political leaders, unfortunately, um, uh, have their, uh, their own um, you know, political interest in mind. And, and sure. the language they use uh, all the time is, is not the language of reconciliation. I have yeah. four members of my family who have uh, been right. killed in Gaza myself, and yeah. and 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 I, and, and my, my heart also bleed um, uh, to the people who are uh, being kept hostage uh, at this time mm -hmm. as well. I think people of faith yeah. have this um, in common. Confucius yes. once held a baby on top of a well, yeah. and he was about to drop the baby on the uh, uh, um, uh, drop the baby to his death, and everybody gathered. Yeah. Uh, people who were males, females, uh, mm -hmm. faith, without faith. And, it, and he said, how many of you will be distressed if I drop this baby in the well? And everybody raised their hand. And he right. said, thus the human creed. We need a human Amen. creed at this point. Amen. I wish we had more time. Uh, but we, we should do this again before the, as, as we all enter okay. our various holiday seasons. Bishop William Barber, Rabbi Sharon Browse, Imam Imad and Kasi, uh, thank you all so much for such a thoughtful discussion. We'll be right back.